Welcome back. This is the third video in the series on buildups, metal decking, and overhangs. This is the overhang video. Uh, so what is an overhang? That is the part of the deck outside of the exterior girder. And what we're going to be looking to do here is figure out how to grade this uh, point right here, the outside bottom edge of the overhang, properly. Now, overhangs are held up with overhang jacks normally. Every now and then you might see one held up with needle beams, but normally it's going to be an overhang jack. Uh, this overhang jack, the bottom edge rests against the side of the girder. It's adjustable with uh, this leg and these slots, and it is held up with an all thread. Now, if you look at the top side, you can see the all thread coming up through here beside the girder, and it is attached to the half hanger. And we can see, and we know from uh, previous videos, that this must be a no weld zone because the metal decking is not welded to the girder, and neither is the half hanger. All right. <clears throat> So how do we grade overhangs? We're going to be referring to the North Carolina Department of Transportation Construction Manual. And I'm going to put a link to that in the notes below the video on YouTube. And we're going to be looking for the engineering control section. And if you find that, you look down here and you see suggested procedures for grading buildups on continuous or simple span bridges. Now, this text is straight out of that manual. Uh, the first note here that I've got highlighted says theoretical overhang elevations are no longer supplied and should not be used to grade overhangs. What this means is we used to have in the construction elevations uh, calculated elevations for the overhangs and we don't use that anymore. The reason being that if you go out and set your overhang grades in the morning and then come back in the heat of the day and check them again the, the temperature change can affect the camber, especially in that steel girder, and you could end up with errors. So we don't use that anymore. Uh, we revised the construction elevations a couple of years ago, so all the new ones coming out should not include that, that information. And in a few minutes, we'll look at what information is included, which makes your job much easier grading overhangs. So overhangs, uh, you can grade them with what's called a preacher. And they call it a preacher because a preacher never lies. What you're doing is uh, you are setting the elevation of the overhang relative to the elevation of the girder. So this can be done with either an engineer's level or it can be done with the preacher. And you're just basically figuring the algebraic difference between the bottom of the slab over the girder and the outside bottom edge of the overhang. Now, in some bridges, this is going to be pretty simple. If you've got uh, a straight deck and you've got a normal crown, you may only have to calculate one uh, algebraic difference because both sides are symmetrical. If you have a super elevated bridge, you might get by with doing two. So you'll have one for the left side of the bridge and one for the right side of the bridge. Uh, where it gets complicated is if you have a structure where you have varying super elevation or you have varying overhang widths, and we will look at those cases as well. Now here's a, here are the simple examples. You can see you've got a straight deck and straight girders here. And all the way down this overhang, you can see that the distance from the center line of the girder over to the edge of your overhang, wherever that's going to be, will be constant. You get the same thing if you have curved decks and curved girders. So you get the same distance here from the center line of the girder to the edge of your overhang as you would anywhere down through this uh, section. Where it gets complicated is when you have a curved deck and straight girders and you can see that the width of that overhang varies and we'll see why that's significant in just a minute. What we're actually looking for here is the algebraic difference between this point right here, the bottom of the deck slab, and this point right here, bottom outside edge of the overhang. And in order to do that, we are going to figure uh, through the deck thickness, the super elevation, and the edge thickness to come up with that algebraic difference. And that's what we're going to use to set this. So the tools that we're going to be using for this, uh, <clears throat> you can use what I call the preacher. And the preacher is 
this right here. I've seen various different types of preachers. You'll see another example of a different type of preacher later on. But basically, you need an adjustable rod or something on each end of it, and you need a level and something to hold it all together. You can also use just a level and ruler, and you need uh, basically two stick rules and a level, and this would require two people, one measuring on this side and one measuring on this side. Uh, you'll also use your structure workbook. You need to have all of this information recorded in your structure workbook and have it in your pocket before you start. Uh, another option is just like we saw in the build-up video, you could use an engineer's level. And what you would be doing there, you'll be shooting a point on the top of the girder, and you'd be shooting a point on the overhang and calculating the difference between those. So here's how we go through that calculation. Um, your construction elevations will give you bottom of slab elevations over the center line of the girder for... Uh, every one of your 20th, 40th, or 60th points over right here. So we know what that theoretical elevation is supposed to be. We know that our deck thickness doesn't change. Anywhere on that deck, the slab thickness should be the same, and you have that information in your plans. Now, here's where the variables come in. The distance to the center line, uh, from the center line of the girder to the gutter line. Uh, this can vary, as we saw on the example where you had a curved deck and straight girders. And the other variable can be the super elevation. If there is a transition in the super elevation on the deck, it can affect this. So when we start right here, we know what this theoretical elevation is supposed to be, and we add the deck thickness right here, plus the deck thickness. Then we multiply the distance from the center line of the girder to the gutter line by the super elevation. And that can be a plus or a minus. If this was a super elevated section and it was going up right here, we would add that. In this situation, the super elevation is going down, so we would subtract that uh, number that we get from multiplying the super elevation times this distance from our, our number. The area underneath the barrier wall is level. That's the way it's always calculated. And we know from our plans, this is another constant, the edge of deck thickness. Now you may have a different deck thickness on one side of the bridge versus the other, but all the way down uh, one side of the bridge, that will be a constant. And so we add that, subtract that, and subtract this, and that will give you the algebraic difference between where this point is and where this point is. Now we've got one more number in here, at the bottom here, which is two hundredths for form settlement. What is form settlement? Well, the contractor's going to come out and he's going to form this overhang up and it's going to be at a certain elevation when he does that. When he loads that with concrete, the weight of that concrete is going to push this form down. And we have chosen 0.02 for that form settlement. So when we grade this overhang, we're actually going to be grading it about two hundredths higher than where we wanted it. And the weight of that concrete mashing down this overhang form is going to put it back where we wanted it to begin with. All right. Curved decks, straight versus curved girders. Now, if you've got a curved deck and a curved girder, as we said before, uh, that's not too bad. You've got a uniform overhang width, and that means that the distance from the center line of that girder to the gutter line is consistent, and it's not too bad to work with. Uh, if you've got straight girders, that's going to be a little more complicated. Uh, the distance is going to vary, and you're going to have to set arc offsets. Uh, and overhang forms do not always follow the edge of the girder elevation, and I'll have a picture that will explain that a little bit better. Uh, as I mentioned, we have revised the way we do our construction elevations in the past couple of years. Uh, what I'm telling you right now is the old method. Uh, we'll go through the, how much simpler it will be with the new method in a minute. But as of right now, we have to establish those arc offsets. Now, what's an arc offset? We have to be able to establish this line, which is the edge of the slab. And... The information on the plans uh, that we used to get 
you were given a point here, which is at the, if it's an interior bent, it would be the control line for the bent at the edge of the slab. And if it was an end bent, it would be the center line of the uh, joint at the edge of the slab. And you would have to go out there and find those two points and you would have to stretch a string line or a chalk line in between those and mark this line. And then you would measure from that line you had established at certain intervals over to this arc. And that arc represents the edge of your deck. So if you look on the plans, you can see right here, bent number one control line. You would have to establish this point and here's in bent number one control line and it's at the center line uh, of the joint and you'd have to establish this point. That can be difficult depending on skews and it, you're basically working out there in the air sometimes. It can be hard to establish those two points. But once you did establish that and chalk this line in right here, then you would square off of that line at these increments. In this situation, you have 20 spaces at five foot each. So you would measure those off and mark them. And at each one of those points, you would square off of this chalk line over to your arc and measure over, in this case, one foot, two and three eighths inches and make a mark. And you connect all those marks and that establishes the edge of your overhang. Here's a little uh, better example from a picture. We would be establishing this point here and another point at the bent here that we can't see and chalk this line in between those two points. And that's at the edge of your slab at the center line of the joint right here. Then you square off this line and measure over at each one of those intervals to mark this point. And that's, that's going to be done when... Uh, before the side form put up and then they've come through here and they've got that done and they're setting their side form to that mark down through here. All right, newer construction elevations are going to be far simpler to use. As I said, they no longer have overhang elevations, but what they do give you is these two dimensions, A and B. Uh, we already had all the uh, information in the design that they could use in the construction elevations to produce this information so it saves you doing a lot of math. And the first um, dimension that they're going to give you is A and that is at each 20th, 40th, and 60th points you will get this dimension from the center line of the girder over to the edge of the slab. Uh, one caveat to this, especially when you're working with uh, long concrete girders, is you would need to go to each end of the girder and mark the center and stretch a string down it because some of these girders can have sweep in them and you don't want that sweep to be reflected in your overhang. So you establish that point at the 20th, 40th, or 60th points and you measure over this distance A and that will give you what we just went through uh, on those arc offsets and you can establish the edge of your slab. The second piece of information it gives you is this B. It is going ahead and figuring that algebraic difference between the bottom of the slab over the center line of the girder and the bottom outside edge of the overhang. So it's already calculating all that for you. Now, one of the most common questions I get in, in a bridge where you've got straight girders and a curved deck is something looks wrong with my overhangs. And you can see this handrail follows your overhang forms. So you can see there's this big peak in it and your initial reaction is, that's the way my overhang's gonna look, that doesn't look right. What's happening here is you have a very short distance right here to make that elevation adjustment in your overhang forms. So it really exaggerates uh, this uh, change in the deck elevation. Out here in the middle of the span on this when you've got a longer distance, so that is not as exaggerated. Now, if you get down and look down this overhang form, it's got a, a good shape to it. It's following the proper grade, but due to that exaggeration right here, the handrails and the overhang jacks will look like there's something wrong, but it's not. All right, this is uh, the preacher that I was talking about earlier. And you can see uh, what we're looking for here is 
we've got a rod on one side, an all thread on one side here, and you can tell that it's longer than the all thread on this side. What you want is this distance, the difference in the length of these two all threads, that is what you want to be, uh, it should represent the distance from the top of the girder to this point right here. So you would take your uh, algebraic difference that we went through in figure, or you would take that uh, B dimension that I showed on that last drawing, and you would subtract your buildup height from that. That way you can set this end, uh, this all thread, directly on top of the girder right here, level up the preacher, and this end, this all thread should just touch the overhang form. In most situations, in order to not have to do the math, uh, what you can do is on this side, you would set the uh, length of this rod below that nut to whatever your buildup height is. And on this side, you would set the length of the rod below the nut to be whatever your algebraic difference is from the bottom of slab center line of girder to the bottom outside edge of the overhang. Uh, that will work out in most situations unless you have a situation where there's a negative buildup or for some reason uh, the bottom of the overhang is sloping upward. And in those situations, you would probably have to add an equal length to both rods. You just pick an arbitrary length, six inches, a foot, whatever is easiest to keep up with. Another method of doing this that we spoke of earlier, you could just use a level and two stick rules to do the same thing. Or, uh, once you establish the difference in elevation from the top of the girder to the bottom of the overhang, you could shoot this point with an engineer's level and then shoot this point with an engineer's level and adjust it until you got that algebraic difference that you were looking for. And again, at this point, uh, <clears throat> you're taking the algebraic difference that you got working these elevations around through here, you're subtracting that buildup height and that gives you the algebraic difference from the top of the girder to this point on the overhang. You can see these uh, gentlemen here are using a preacher to set their overhang jacks before they get all that heavy form work on top of it. And they have compensated uh, with the length of this all thread. Uh, they've made it longer to compensate for that uh, additional form work that's going to have to go on top of this overhang jack. So it's far easier to adjust the grades on these and get them close before you put that uh, put your overhang forms on top of the jack. Now, how do we not grade overhangs? Do not use the overhang elevations if you have an old set of plans and an old set of construction elevations that include them. Uh, do not use the metal decking. Now, what do I mean by that? I have seen cases where someone has tried to uh, just extend with a straight edge the grade of this metal decking. And the metal decking is supposed to be the same grade as the bottom of the deck slab. And they've tried to extend this with a straight edge and make the calculations and measure down to their overhang elevation. But don't do this. Uh, reason being, if this metal decking was set perfectly, that may work. But what if that metal decking was not set perfectly? There was some error in it. If you extend that error on out, you could be significantly different out here at the overhang. And that could go either way, up or down. So we always want to make sure that we uh, use the buildup. The buildup, as we established in the buildup video, is just like a benchmark. And we should use the buildup to set our metal decking. We should use the buildup to set our overhangs. And when you review the screed setup videos, we should use that uh, buildup to set the grade on our screed. Go back to the benchmark and you eliminate all these compounding errors that can build on each other. All right, this is not a difficult process and uh, it can be confusing at first, but after you run through it a few times, it, it makes a lot more sense. Always check your overhang grades from the buildups, as I just mentioned. And if you've got any questions, feel free to contact your, contact your area construction engineer or your regional bridge construction engineer. And thank you for watching.